Well, all right, friends, subscribers, internet strangers, what's up? Bearded Picker here, back at you with another video. And this one, the topic we're going to cover this week is the graphic gave it away, right? All right, let's talk about uh, Amazon repricers. So, you know, the first question everybody asks, and especially newer newer sellers, um, why do I need a repricer? Is the Amazon free one good enough? And so the one thing that I would tell you is, is once you get above, you know, 30, 40, 50 SKUs, it becomes impossible for you to reprice manually as fast as people are paying for repricers. Um, repricers have various, you can pay for various different ones, um, and they have different intervals with which they reprice. So if you have 50 items and re you reprice, you know, once a day, um, you know, you take a good bit of time, you figure out 30, 31 days a month, um, that becomes very time consuming. Um, is the Amazon free one good enough? To get started, maybe yes. It'll move up and down, but you know it doesn't have any of the bells and whistles or any of the fancy stuff that goes with a repricer. Um, whereas all the paid ones have different different formulas. So is the Amazon free one good enough? I don't think so. It has it goes up and down. It doesn't fight for the buy box, and the fancier ones, the ones you pay for, really are made to where they are going to get you the buy box, and they are going to fight it to put you if you. All things being equal with price, um, they're going to do their best to figure out how what it takes to get you there. So, how do you choose a repricer? They all have similar functions. You know, some have al algorithmic pricing. That's a good word. Um, some have do a better job of fighting for the buy box than others. There are a couple of them that are integrated in an inventory lab, which those two are Inform.co and Be Cool. But there, there are just so many out there. Um, Aura, Channel Max, Reprice It, Celery, Repricer Express, Excel Co, Sn Seller Snap Feed, Feedvisor, Alpha Repricer. They are, the prices run the gamut. I believe Be Cool might be the cheapest. It's $25 a month for a certain number of re-listings. And I think Channel Max might be next at 35 or 36 And then Aura is a newer one at 57 I know some of them are very expensive. Celery is like 1% of your sales. And my buddy John Chartier uses one that's like 500 a month. So they all have, there's a price range. And, I, you know, you can, the nice thing about the cheapest one, Be Cool, is if you're using Inventory Lab, you know, they work together. So you can put the price, minimum, maximum prices in Inventory Lab and Be Cool will pick them up. So the one thing is you really need to figure out to to choose the right one that's right for you you need to figure out how you how you want to reprice and each one of them has different methods they all have different um formulas to fight for the buy box but most of them have will reprice based on a profit percentage so if you put your cost of the item in um they will take the amazon fees and say you want to return 30 percent on a ten dollar item they will take the fees and calculate and the, the lowest that they will go is to that price and they will stay competitive. Um, the other main way most of them reprice is to a, is allow you to put a minimum and a maximum price. You know, what's the absolute lowest you want to sell it for and what's the absolute highest you want to sell it for. So, you know, I see a lot of people making a mistake right there. That is the one part that absolutely destroys people for some reason. They don't understand that if, you know, if you've got an item that you pay $10 for and you put a minimum of $10, you're going to lose money. No doubt about it, the fees, there's no physical way for you to make money on a $10 item that you charge $10 for. It just, just won't happen. So, you know, with shipping and fees and everything else. So, so if you want to take, if you want to make 30%, uh, it means you're going to need to clear $13 on a $10 item. You need, you only need to make three to $3 profit. So, the easiest way I can tell newer uh, sellers to understand what this is is to use the FBA calculator. Um, if you if you don't know where it is, uh, just Google it. It'll show up. It's in uh, it's in Seller Central somewhere. I just Google it every time I need it. Um, basically, it's going to ask you for the sale price, 
It's going to ask you for your shipping information to Amazon. It's going to ask you for your cost. And when you put those in, at the bottom, it's going to tell you what your profit is. And so if you did that with each item as you bought them, and until you understand you know, where that number is and what it takes and where the profit is, you just this is if you're new at, at reselling on Amazon FBA, you just can't afford to guess. You can't afford to, to make this kind of mistake because, you know, it's you're at a difficult proposition. You're you're trying to learn a platform, you're trying to learn the rules, you're trying to find stuff to sell, and to do all this hard work for free is <laughs> you won't last long. So, you know, take the time until you understand it to get that, what's, what is that lowest number? And it could be something different from everyone else. For me, it's 30%. That's why I use this as an example. Um, that's where I generally put the bottom of the repricer. Um, the top number is not nearly as important. The top number, you need it on there, the highest, because if you're the last one in with an item, sometimes repricers go crazy. And we'll, you know, a $10 item, they'll, be, they'll put it three, four, five hundred dollars $500. So and then Amazon, you'll come up with a red flag when you log into Seller Central saying you've got a price out of bound. It's been inactivated due to price, a pricing error. So that number, if it's an, it's an item that's ten dollars and it sells for say twenty five, you know I'd probably put the max at fifty or sixty. Just give us some room to play, and then but not too high where you're going to get going to get deactivated because of price. Over time, like I say, uh, based on the weight and the size of an item. You know, you should be able to use the, the uh, when you scan it with, with the seller app itself to understand that, you know, at, at the current, this $10 item selling $24, um, whatever the gross proceeds are, you should be able to subtract out your cost. And, you know, I generally don't even consider shipping, inbound shipping because it, I use larger boxes and I send a lot of items at times. So, you know, it's 50, 60 cents anyway, so it's not that huge a difference. So, you know, just for the sake of example, that this if this ten dollar item is selling for twenty five dollars, let's just say that brings back eight. So now you can look at that and go at twenty five dollars, that's eight. If you take back take the five off of it, because I'm gonna need to make at least three dollars, you know, I'm gonna set my minimum price at twenty or sometime somewhere between between nineteen and twenty one. And you know, the maximum price is still be forty or fifty dollars. So it, it becomes very simple. You just have to watch some items the the fees on an item go up as the weight goes up. So the smaller the item, the lighter the item, the less the fees because it's cheaper to ship. So the next thing you have to, after you've got one of the more important things is after you've gotten the how it, the price range or where you want it to stay, um, you're going to need to make some decisions on who you want to reprice against. The one thing I'll tell you is be careful with Amazon if they have a very aggressive repricer and as you go below them they tend to go down with you and chase you down and keep the buy box so basically they're going to stay in the buy box and you're going to beat their price down so if you even if you sell any you're going to be selling at their lower price they're almost always going to sorry i need to set up they're almost always going to chase you down there are some exceptions always is you know it's not there's no definites in this game but um so when I set up a repricer, um, I always tell it with Amazon to match. That way you don't trigger that price reduction from them. So the next thing you have to des- decide is, on, on most repricers, is who you want. Do you want to price against only FBA? Do you want to reprice? Do you want to ignore Merchant Fulfilled? Do you want to price against the buy box, no matter who's in it? These are some questions that you're going to have to answer for yourself and figure out for yourself. Most of them have set up for strategies that you can just choose a strategy and 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 just look through the strategy and make sure it is what you want it to be and and you can just choose that strategy i generally set up a custom one just i don't know hard-headed who knows why (laughs) but i generally don't the the one thing i like about some of the the algorithmic repricers is you have the ability not to reprice against someone who is not in stock or is in um, back order you also can eliminate Merchant Fulfilled, which I generally do both those, and then everyone else. I'll either match or maybe a penny less, but be careful with the penny less because I'm I'm the I'm the kind of person that will match and say I don't want to be the one that starts the price war. You know, I'm, I'll match your price because there is there's settings that most of us say if you're in a buy box now what you know maintain 
um, raise lower and some of the algorithmic repricers will will play with that will move you up and down um, while you're still in the buy box according to their function to keep you there um, but I generally try not to to do the minus one too much because basically you're just triggering if someone else is using a repricer and you come in a penny low them it's just, you're just gonna penny down penny down penny down and it's yeah, it's gonna it's gonna free fall to one of you hits your minimum at some point or they sell or the item sells so in my opinion and in my experience you're much better off to match the other buy box and you both sell at a higher price that's that's my recommendation because one of the questions that i have for someone someone had for me when i was talking about doing a price or just a video talking about repricers was how do you stop the race to the bottom and Honestly, you can't, but you can help minimize it because you can't control what others repricers does, but you can control what yours does. And if you match, you're not the one, especially if there's less sellers on an item, you won't be the one to trigger to, to go down. So the other person might, there's not, nothing you can do about it, but that is, that is just, just some of my thoughts on a repricer. They are an invaluable tool, but like any other tool, if you don't understand how to use it, um, reach out and ask someone. You can send me a message, you can send me an email or whatever, and I'll do my best. You know, those kind of questions I can answer. It's the questions I get. I saw your video. Can you teach me how, or tell me how you did this or how you do this? It's not possible to answer an email, but you know, hey, I'm sitting on my repricer. How would you do this? What strategy? And you know, like a simple question where I can say, hey, I do match, I do this. You know, I can tell you a short sentence why if I didn't cover your exact topic in this in this video but each each of the repricers have something that's a little bit different some of them channel more into your inventory so that um there's other, other there's other factors that why people pay for the larger ones um it, you know some of the repricers are connected to your inventory so they tell you when to reorder or they they use all those kind of things to forecast when you need to order more product if you're a wholesaler so you know the, the more expensive ones you probably didn't think why would somebody pay more because there's there's extra functions involved that since I've never used them I don't talk about them a lot because I'm not too familiar with them. Um, I've used Inform.co it does fine. I've used Be Cool it does fine. I've used Channel Max it does fine. I'm currently using R right now it's one of the newer ones. Um, just I don't know it's doing very it's doing fine. I, I like the way it sets up and I actually haven't canceled Channel Max yet. I still have it subscription for it now, but uh, I'll probably be staying with R for, for, for a little while, just to see what happens, just to see how it works. But I just wanted to touch base and just give you some basics and understand that the most important things is once you get a few items where you can't reprice every day, it's costing you a lot of time. You know, maybe it's time to get one of the cheaper ones, be cool, channel max, something $25 is, you know, it's less than a dollar a day. And how much is your time worth to you? And if you're going to spend an hour a day repricing, how much can you, what else can you do for an hour? It's less than a dollar to spend to have a computer reprice your item. You know, some of them are every 15 minutes, some of them every hour, some of them every couple of minutes. And, and just, just think about it for a minute. If you had a reprice that repriced every 15 minutes, so it's going to reprice four times an hour, 24 hours a day, it's 96 times a day. It's going to check your prices and reprice against your competition. You'll be amazed. Um, I use the, the adjective or the term you know they ask people ask what what does the repricer do it's like pouring gasoline on a fire if amazon sales were a fire and you know if things sell an fba quickly if you really want to accelerate it and really up your sales um a repricer is like pouring gas on that fire and that's the best way i can describe it and i've i can't tell you how many people tell me over and over i don't, I don't know why i waited so long oh my goodness scott you're so right don't know a ton of stuff, but I can tell you that one thing I do know, a repricer will absolutely, a repricer that is set up correctly will absolutely increase your sales and help you increase your profit because you will turn over products faster. I can make that promise to you. All right. I hope that I've covered everything. If not, leave it in the comments below. I'll try to answer any questions in the comments below. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And uh, the little things just show up down there. I keep forgetting to put that thing in there. Oh, well, hey, thanks for watching Roll Tide.